Hello everyone and welcome back to West Ham Fan TV. It's the summer, of course, and the transfer window is open and we'll be here every single day with transfer news until it shuts at the beginning of the next season. So let's get straight into it and let's have a look at some of the rumours. Well, with the manager not appointed yet, there's not many to, uh, to, to, to talk about at the moment, um, but there is a few. So let's have a talk about the main ones that I've read this morning. So number one... Um, Yaya Toure. Uh, uh, Rumours have been going on about this for, for a little while now. Yaya Toure, of course, he's leaving Manchester City. He's been released on a free. Um, £220,000 a week, which is a hell of a lot of money for such a, uh, a an old guy. Yaya Toure, of course, he's a, he's a, he's a world-class player. He was a world-class player. Um, I haven't seen much of him of late, but I, he could probably still do a job. But at £220,000 a week, I don't think I would take the risk uh, Manuel Pellegrini is expected to be named as our new manager of course and as someone he's worked with and knows very well. He's got some left in the tank, um, I reckon. He's got a little bit left in the tank. He's not going to be that uh, that talisman that we want, the, you know, the guy that can play week in, week out. We have got a little bit of experience of taking a, a, an older guy from Man City, of course, with Pablo Zabaleta, who, who, who I thought has um, done very well this season. He, he's, he's impressed me. Um, but he hasn't got the legs he used to. He's not. He's not that. Um, he's not that one to make a difference. I'll, I'll prefer someone with a little bit more pace up the right, if I'm honest. Um, but Yaya Torre, Pellegrini knows him. Two hundred twenty thousand pounds a week. His agent has reportedly said, if well, if um, you're not happy with the performances he gives, we'll terminate the contract and we'll give you half your money back. But even if he gives you half your money back, it's still one hundred ten thousand pounds a week, um, which I don't think we're in a position to do. Um, can I see this happening? I don't know. I don't know. Um, Pellegrini would obviously want some money. He'd want to sign some of his own players. Torre may be someone he would be looking at as obviously he's worked with him before. He knows his qualities. He knows his strengths. He also knows his weaknesses. Um, and midfield is a, is a big problem. Um, would, I would take Torre if it was a, a lesser wage, of course. Um, but at £220,000 a week, I think the risk is too high. Can I see this one happening? Not really, um, but we'll keep an eye on it in the coming days. Gel Mario, of course, uh, on loan with us last season. Um, I was a big fan of his initially when he first came. He showed a little bit of of uh, what he was about in the last uh, few games of the season. I thought he played very well in some of them games. The last game especially, I thought he was brilliant. Um, but um, it was £39 million, pounds, I think. The agent has jetted in to talk to West Ham and Sullivan about uh, making the move permanent. Is he someone that maybe Pellegrini can get a, uh, a tune out of? Maybe. He showed promise. He did show promise. The only thing I thought about Joe Mario when he was with us on loan is that he is a little bit lightweight. He's a little bit... Um, he needs to at the gym. He needs to get a little bit more physical. This, this league is a very physical league. Uh, for £39 million quiz, I definitely wouldn't take... Um, I wouldn't take him. Um, of course, there's rumours about Lanzini moving on, which would leave a big gap there for the creative midfielder. Maybe someone like him could step into. Uh, but for my mind, at, at the moment, he's no Manuel Lanzini. He's not a creative enough midfielder um, and doesn't score enough goals. Of course. Anyway, to, uh, it's reported at 20 million that we may be able to get him for, and I think I would take him for 20 million. But of course, We've got to remember that the manager's coming in and it's going to be the manager's responsibility to make the signing. So it may be someone he fancies, it may be someone he don't fancy, but let's have a look, um, let's have a look, see how that one pans out anyway. Let's talk about outgoings, of course. Joe Hart has left the club. Um, he was obviously belonged to Man City, but he's left the club after a very poor loan spell. Um, and Wolves uh, have, have declared interest in him. Um, if he goes to Wolves, I think that about suit him. He's, he's very much in decline goalkeeper. And of course, we need a goalkeeper ourselves. But it definitely wouldn't be Joe Hart that I'd be looking to sign on a permanent. Um, very poor season. Um, good attitude. He, he's, you know, he's, he's a good character to have around. But you know, that's the, the sort of wages he demands and, um, you know, and, and what he brings to the club, I don't think he's worth it at the end of the day. Uh, he's been dropped from England. He's not an England goalkeeper anymore. Um, if he was like a two million pound signing, I might take him as a backup. But um, we should be looking at a, a, you know a, a real good goalkeeper this year because it's something that we haven't had really since Adrian. He's good, 
I wouldn't say he was world class, but we haven't had a decent goalkeeper since Green, I don't think. Um, you know, a real class goalkeeper. Yes, Kalainen was a good goalkeeper, but um, anything in the corners, he was so old he couldn't get up there. But I can't think, no, Adrian, decent keeper, um, not world class. Randolph, again, decent keeper, not world class. Joe Hart, I thought, might have been the, the you know, the, um, you know, the Rob Green signing, you know, the one that, you know, is really safe hands, but he wasn't, he let a lot of goals in, um, not helped by managers and defences, of course, but um, it, I think it would be a decent move for someone like Hart to go to, um, that someone like Hart to go to, you know, a, a promoted club, um, to get a lifeline, get his career back on track. Anyway, let's have a look. The next one, uh, James Collins, of course, has left the club. Um, contract has terminated. Um, something I'm very disappointed at. He was on thirty-five thousand pounds a week, reportedly, which is peanuts. I think it's worth signing him up for that sort of money just to have him around a changing room. But nonetheless, he's been released, and of course, the way he was released is, is you know. It's brought up a little bit of controversy. Um, some people reporting that he was told by email. Some people saying that he was spoken to, and then the email was just a case of, um, you know, crossing the uh, dotting the eyes and crossing the t's, and, and uh, you know that was required. But Matthew Everton has come out on Twitter and said that he wasn't spoken to. He was just all done by email. Of obviously, Pellegrini coming in may change his mind. Um, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen with Ginge? Uh, if that is the way he's been, he's been treated by the club. I think it's disgusting for someone that's give so many years of service. Um, people saying it's an overreaction. People saying that you know it, it's just the way things are done these days. Well, listen, I've worked in several jobs and I've give a lot less service than James Collins has given to West Ham, and probably a lot less effort as well. Um, and they've always got me in face to face to tell me that I was obviously. I, I don't think I've ever. I think I've been sacked once when I was when I was a kid. But um, if ever they had a problem with me, or ever they wanted to, you know, to tell me that they, that you know they're looking somewhere else, they've always had me in face to face. They give me letters by hand, not by email. You know, so poor, poor decision from the club. I think. I think um, obviously you you can't just give people contracts for the sake of giving people contracts, which is. You know, um, I, I think you know nostalgia can get the, the the best of people, and sentiment can get the best of people. But not in the case of James Collins. I still think James Collins can do a job. I think he'd be a brilliant backup. I want to see more of Rice this season. But you know, James Collins is so dedicated to his club that he would be around to to help us out when we needed. You know, when he hasn't been playing at the end of the season, we sat with, in, in the stands with him. That's how dedicated he is to this club. I think sometimes that uh, people. Let lose sight of that that you know someone who has the club ingrained in their in their um, DNA, you know they can be useful. I would keep him around for you know to to teach him to coach. You know keep him on the playing staff until he's ready to finish, because he could be. I think that Ginge could be the next manager of West Ham um, at some point. You know what I mean? So I think it's a very poor decision by the board. Um, I won't go too much about it because I, I, you know I know a lot has been said and, and done. Um, and let's wrap this transfer video up. Last but not least, very cryptic messages this morning um, from Winston Reid. Winston Reid put out on his Instagram, and I'm gonna get up the quote. So Winston Reid's currently on a holiday in China, and he's put on his Instagram, it's a photo of him sitting in a, a beautiful swimming pool. He's looking very fit, Winston Reid, but um, the message underneath the photo, it says soon, with an airplane and a, a British flag, on to the next destination. Now, um, I take this as he's coming home. Who knows? Uh, maybe he's going back on holiday. But um, a lot of people are speculating that this could mean that he may be on his way out the door. Now, Winston Reid has been a great servant to his club. He's given some great moments. Um, obviously, the uh, the obvious one being the greatest. But he's been injured a lot. And um, I think as a club, we need to be looking at people that you know, spend more time on the pitch than on the treatment table. And it could be, if I had a choice, he would probably be one of the ones I would want moved on if it was um, a choice of him or getting someone else in uh, a little bit younger. Um, 
and who plays more, to be quite honest with you. Someone to learn the trades and someone that, that can be potentially a good um, defender in the future. I would move him on because he spends, he's, he, you know, I, I think it's, it's a shame about Reed because he's got like a muscle um, disease that, you know, season gets more injuries than most. Um, and he spends a lot of time out on the, on the sidelines. He's a great defender. Always loved Winston um, since he came in 2010. Spent eight years at the club. But if he was to move on, I wouldn't be too sad because, as I say, he's, he's pushing on in age a little bit now. And injuries and stuff are, are, are starting to creep more and more into his game. Um, would you sell him? Put your answers in the comment section down below. Would Winston Reid be a good one? We'll put, do you know what? We'll put a poll up here. Put, we've got, we put a poll up here. Um, if you click on the i button, there would be a poll. Should we get rid of Reed? Um, if that's what his obviously his Instagram messages say. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us on this edition of the Transfer Roundup. I think Ryan will be back tomorrow with more news uh, and to update you on the news that I've already given you. Um, follow us all summer. We're going to be following the World Cup. We're going to be having loads of stuff coming up. We'll obviously be reacting to the new manager. Um, following up with the World Cup, we'll be going on to. You know, European tours, we, we go away for friends and all that stuff. So keep your eyes peeled on West Ham Fan TV this summer. Don't forget about us because we're here every single day. Um, and one thing left to say, lads, come on you irons.